Hi friends, so excited to welcome you back to the channel. And if you're new here, a warm welcome to Digitize Health, the channel that keeps you updated on all things digital health and fitness technology. My name's Munim and I'm a family medicine physician, also known as a GP in the UK. Now, over the past few weeks, since we released our very first video, which was on the CardioMobile 6L device, we've had a flurry of questions on the exact capabilities of the device in terms of the abnormalities it can detect and whether it can be used in emergencies at home. I thought we'd tackle these two important questions directly in a video, so here we go. As things currently stand, AliveCore, the company that produces CardioMobile 6L, states the device is capable of detecting four heart rate or rhythm related features, atrial fibrillation, bradycardia, tachycardia, and normal heart rhythm. We've previously deep dived into atrial fibrillation, but if you want to get a general idea of what this is, check out our CardioMobile 6L review, where I provide a succinct whiteboard explanation that many have found useful. In addition to this important heart rhythm problem, the device can detect bradycardia. Bradycardia refers to the heart beating below a certain speed or rate. Now in most healthcare communities, this is considered to be below 60 beats per minute. However, a life course seemed to use below 50 uh, per minute as their cutoff. Now, herein starts to lie the problems in trying to self-interpret the data CardioMobile can currently detect. There are many reasons for bradycardia, both serious and not serious, and for the average person to know which it is can be really challenging. So the most famous not so serious one is fitness. Athletes can have very low resting heart rates. Certain medications might lower the heart rate, such as those for blood pressure. And depending on how low this goes, it may be serious, it may not be. Other causes that may need medical attention include being very cold, not having enough oxygen in the blood, pain, an underactive thyroid, and a long list of heart-related conditions that would be dizzying to go through amongst many other causes. But how does anyone filter through this list to know which is which and when is the device detecting worrying bradycardia? The answer is it can be very difficult. Clearly, if you're feeling unwell in any way, with a low heart rate detected, you should be seeking prompt medical advice from a trained healthcare professional. Outside of this, if you're well but have any doubts, the only way to know for sure is to get advice from your physician and allow them to filter through the list of possible causes for you. Let's talk about tachycardia. In most healthcare circles, this refers to a heart rate above 100 beats per minute, and AliveCore agrees with this. With tachycardia, we face the same problem as with bradycardia in that there are serious and not serious causes. Tachycardia has a very famous, usually not serious cause for it, and that is exercise. So we're gonna do a few star jumps, get the heart beating, see if we can get it up to 100, and then see what this device does when we are above 100 on the heartbeat. So let's go. So let's see if that was enough to uh, get the cardio and detecting uh, fast heart rate. So if we just set up the cardio app and you can see it's all ready to go. So I'll bring that there and let's put our two fingers on and start to see if it detects a fast heart rate. And it has detected that the heart beat is more than 100 beats and that this can be normal with stress or physical activity and that atrial fibrillation was not detected. Other usually non-directly life-threatening causes may include things such as an emotional response, anxiety or panic attacks or feeling emotionally distressed such as grieving. More serious causes though include fast and abnormal rhythms that compromise blood flow around the body, infections, overactive thyroid, overdosing on certain medications, to name but a few causes. Once again, the rate alert on the cardio device needs to be put into context. If you're feeling unwell in any way, you need to get straight onto contacting a healthcare professional. If you had been feeling well at the time, but are in any way uncertain as to why it was high, then contact a physician for advice. 
If you're finding this video helpful, we would be your biggest fan if you could let us know by punching the subscribe button below and tickling that like button. Finally, the normal heart rhythm detection. This is a useful feature, but at the present time, in my opinion, it should not be used to falsely reassure you. As good as it is in detecting six electrical views of the heart, it is missing six other views that only a full machine-based ECG can currently take. This may change, of course, as technology continues to improve, but at the present time, it can only look at six views. So for this reason, it brings me back to my initial points. If you've been feeling unwell or have had some unusual symptoms or symptoms you're not used to, do not use the device as a screening tool to reassure you everything is fine. This is what your physician is for and has spent years of their life training to do. One day, there may be no need for doctors as technology surpasses even the most talented of medics, but we are far from there at the moment. And until then, your physician is your best guide. Question two, can I use this in an emergency? Well, everything we've discussed so far ties nicely into this question. Yes, you can use it as a guide, as to when seek help or as a useful adjunct of information to provide to the emergency care provider who is trained to interpret such data, but do not use this device in its current state to falsely reassure. It cannot rule out some emergency conditions. So for example, it will not currently tell you if you're having a heart attack. So a normal trace should never be used to completely reassure you this is potentially dangerous. If you think it's an emergency, you would contact your emergency services, even if the device says the trace is normal. Leave it to a physician to decide if the trace is normal. The Alive Core Cardiomobile 6L in 2020 remains a revolutionary device, but use it in an informed way, understanding its limitations. Having it is almost certainly better for your health than not having it if it's used in the right way. Check out the description below with links to LiveCore's official take on the information its device provides, as well as some other links on heart rhythms you may find helpful, as well as links to where the device can be purchased for your convenience. Remember, this video in no way is sponsored by LiveCore and all the opinions in this video are entirely independent and our own. Thank you so much for joining us again. And if you found the video helpful, remember, punch the subscribe button, tickle the like button, and set up your notifications for the best source of information on all things digital health and fitness tech. Until the next time, keep taking care of your heart.